Hey. We're alive. We're alive. Hey, it's Chris Homestead Hardway. And we've had a couple people ask about building hog and livestock shelters. And I promised them I'd do a video last week. Promised one guy I'd do a video last week and I didn't do it. So we need to do one right now. This is our pig shelter. If you've been watching some videos, he wanted to come in here because he wants to see how it's built. This shelter is actually tall enough for a full size grown sow or boar, but it's not deep enough. This one, I think, is four foot by eight foot. It's been a rough cut lumber. And it's just built like a pole barn. You put four posts in the ground. You nail some boards up around it to put the tin on. I, you use tin, you use plywood. I, I usually use tin because we can get used tin for next to nothing or free. Need to put new tin on the roof because the leak's bad. It's just rough cut lumber. I have discovered that you don't have to turn the boards up like you're supposed to. That on these small shelters, they do fine laying down. But that shelter there would be fine for two top hogs, 250 pound pigs, have enough room under it and be able to get far enough to get out of the weather. You build them low, there's a few reasons why you build the shelters low. One, you're never really gonna have to go under. The biggest thing you have to do is you have to put bedding under there and clean them out. Uh, you never have to go under these, just your regular stock shelters, and they're so short that, you know, you can reach in there if you have to. This will work for goats, a few goats, a few sheep. It's a good size. It's a good size, low to ground. The driving rain can't go under it. Snow can't blow under it so bad. And it costs less to build them. The lower to the ground, less lumber. You know, the less lumber you're using in the sides. I don't know if you see, we've got the panels going down on the inside. Now this shelter over here is, it's old. It's, it's at least 15, 20 years old. It's built the same way, just like a pole barn. It's 16 foot long. And really, you need a post about every four foot for hogs. And it's, I think the actual shelter sides are four foot. We're in the south. We don't have to worry about a lot of cold. So we're more worried about it being hot. So we don't build them that tight down here. Now, if you're up north, you're going to have to put a front on it. And if you put a front on it, you have to make it a little bigger. So they've got the overhang here to protect them. And we have topped out 10 hogs in here, but that was really too many. About six is comfortable under this shelf. Not laying on top of each other, fighting over who gets to lay where. This, this is a good size for six. I have done 10, but it was probably overloading it a little bit. Now, These are the fire houses. They're taller because I got to get in them. I've got to go in these when they're having pigs. And uh, I just want you to see the construction. It's just a pole barn. It's just post with boards nailed up around it. You have to block a side or a corner off and you have to put a what they call a pig board around on the inside to keep the sow from laying on the pigs. It gives the pig somewhere to get that the sow can't lay down. But one thing I did wrong on this one, and I'll tell you what I did wrong. See, I only used three boards for the sides. Well, that's not adequate. You need at least four. There's too much of a gap between the boards and the... There's not enough support there for the team. It works, but it can be better. I also didn't do that side, blocking that side off as good as it could have. We fixed, we kept what we liked and fixed what I didn't like on this last one.
you see we did this one different. I put more boards in the side. Now this is built out of rough cut lumber. Everything up here, except the four by fours is rough cut. Some of them are. But uh, you're gonna have to do some kind of termite protection. Now I discovered as long as there's hogs in the pen, the termites aren't a problem. But you take the pigs out and they'll eat it. In three months, they'll just about destroy one of these shelters. There's a few things you can do for that you need to check with probably a local exterminator. They've got some termite stuff that's not dangerous for pigs that they can bury around, spray around. But, uh, the other thing you need to do, if I was going to build a shelter this big now, knowing what I know now, if I was going to build a shelter this big just for the hog shelter, Instead of putting the panels all the way around on the inside, that's a little bit expensive. I would just go and put two boards on the inside, not like those on the back, to keep them from pushing out. But you still need a post. One in the middle at the back of this one would have been ideal, but we try to cut everything money-wise down to bare bones. There's not a lot of money in hogs. And they've got to kind of pay for themselves as they go. Plus, we're in the middle of moving all the hogs from in the cow pasture to up here, having to build all new pens. We're going to keep that pen down there, but it's not going to be for... It's going to be for pigs I buy and resell. It's not going to be for pigs that I'm raising. It's two different entities, two different ballgames. But this will work. Works good. Uh, if I was up north or somewhere cold, instead of that side being open, I would have that side tinned up, and I would probably tin it all the way up the sides so where there was no airflow. Or we'll have, I have seen people take a piece of plywood and cut it and put it on hinges where you can open the shut. In the summertime, you need the air. If it gets to 90 or 100 or 100 plus degrees, you need the airflow. In the winter, you know, if you're getting down to zero, you need to have them shut up. Like I said, we're in the south. So that's not an issue down here. We never get cold enough to have a pig freeze. We talked about heat lamps before. There's your heat lamp set up. That's about how high you need it. And now let's talk about bedding inside the pen while we're on the subject of shelters. We use shavings for bedding inside these farrowing houses. There's been five bags of shavings put down there. That old sow just turn them into the ground. She'll till them right into the ground. If you put them in there two foot thick, she's gonna mix them in with the dirt. But with that heat lamp, you don't need to use hay or straw. She bunches it up under that heat lamp, you could have a fire. Now these other two shelters down here just have feeder pigs in them, or top hogs, we use hay. But there's no heat lamp, but we use hay. Now they're gonna eat the hay, and if it's too warm, they're going to root it out into the pen and turn it into the ground. Wheat straw, people talk about using wheat straw. It's not a good idea. It causes this, that, and the other. But the truth is, we've never had a problem with it. And they don't eat it so bad. So if you get wheat straw that's mainly straw, no grain, they don't eat it too bad. And it tends to work better. You know, we've tried to what would you call it, shredded newspaper before. It did okay. They do need some bedding when it's cold. <coughs> and I apologize for the dog barking. She's kind of protective and doesn't like us. She wants to be between us and the hogs and she's on their side of the fence. Can't stand it. But with pigs and cows, you probably need at least a two by six. Build everything out of two by sixes. Um... Two by eight should be better. Double walled is definitely better. If you put a few boards on the inside, it keeps them from pushing the sides out. It'll definitely help you. And you know, you do them in like this, you know, in the corners, you leave a gap in the middle. But three boards on the inside will save you a lot of trouble in the long run. This works here, we get away with it, but it's not really stout as it should be. I don't have anything to get out the way I've got them set up. The pig boards will keep them in, but. If you had a really rough boar or a sow that was overly aggressive, like the one that just bit that pig's nose, apparently. Oh, poor baby. 
don't know how that happened. Mm -hmm. She must have beat him. They play fight a lot. Um, they don't act like it's bothering him. But I'll let her give you a little. That's really about all I can tell you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. The roof here, I will cover the roof right quick. Just thought about it. I put a six inch drop on the roof. We don't have snow hardly ever. It's, and when we do, we, when we have had snow, it's not been an issue. <coughs> I would think you had a, if you had a heavy snow load, you might need to go with a, a foot or two foot of drops so it'll slide off. Is there anything else I need to cover? Mm -hmm. Actually, those pins, a cow shelter can, at six foot tall, be a plenty for a cow shelter. Hog shelters and goat sheep shelters, four foot's plenty, plenty. But the lower you build them, the better off you are. It takes less materials. The wind doesn't get a hold of them. So we're in hurricane hunt country. We got to worry about high winds. The wind can't get a hold of them as good. The rain can't blow under them. And they hold the heat in better. The lower they are to the ground, the better they hold the heat in. I'm going to let her show you the baby pigs since we ain't put up any videos of the baby pigs while we're here. And I appreciate you watching. And remember, you can do this stuff. If you won't do it, you can do it. But you'll never fly a field to turn over your mind.